Welcome. Welcome to the 101 year old world famous Adventures Club. We have been hosting adventure travelers who travel off the beaten path every Thursday through war, famine, depression, and many other maladies, and we've hardly missed the Thursday, uh, basically since 1921. I'm Craig Carroll, member number 1230, and it is my distinct pleasure to host JPL's Chief Scientist for Planetary Exploration, Rosalie Lopez. Thank you. So Rosalie, I have a toughie for the first one. Okay. What is a volcanologist? Well, a volcanologist is a scientist who studies volcanoes. So you can't, you can't actually do a degree in volcanology. Uh, in fact, my degree is in astronomy. Uh, but uh, I did a PhD in planetary geology, and my PhD advisor was a volcanologist, and, uh, and he said to me, um, you can't understand volcanoes on other planets if you don't understand them on Earth. So I go to Mount Etna to do field work, you come along. So students did kind of like the slave work, you know, and I, I, I have the feeling that we were expendable. No. <laughs> yes, cannon fodder is, I believe, uh, right. what they refer yeah. to you in the Ukraine war. Um, so how do volcanoes work to cool the Earth? Can you just give us a little volcanologist info? Uh, okay, well, very briefly, um, you know, uh, uh, there is magma under the Earth's crust, and in places where that magma can come up, which are mostly places where the uh, plates of the Earth are spreading apart, or one plate is diving under the other. A uh, few exceptions like Hawaii, that's called a hotspot volcanism, is just in the middle of a plate. Uh, you know, those weaknesses in the, in the crust allowing magma to come up, so magma comes up, uh, you know, the, 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 because of the pressure is less, uh, gases in the, ma in the magma um, absorb, come out. It's a bit like popping a bottle of champagne, you know, so and, and it's, like. It's cooling the earth, right? Is yes, yes. In fact, volcanoes are um, one of the a very important way to cool not just the earth, but to cool planets uh, in general. So I read that without volcanoes, there wouldn't be life on Earth. Uh, well, you need heat for life. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, and, and volcanoes do bring certain nutrients. For example, uh, we think that life started uh, in the deep ocean, uh, in deep sea vents. That was before the Adventures Club even existed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe this is happening on um, uh, other planets as well. Uh, moons of the outer solar system uh, have ice crusts, but oceans under the ice crust. And you need, uh, you need energy, you need heat, uh, and uh, you need water. Uh, and you need certain nutrients for life as we know it. Like through the volcanic uh, emissions, right? Uh, right, yeah. It's, uh, you know, and I say life as we know it because that's the only thing that we can, uh, that we can really think about. <laughs> and and it, it, volcanoes also make continents, right? They contribute to continents and islands and things like that? Uh, yes, in fact, if you look at the mid-Atlantic, uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, mm -hmm. there are a number of islands, they are volcanic, uh, you know, Iceland, the Azores, uh, uh, they are all volcanic. Uh, so essentially the, uh, the, uh, the Earth's, uh, has a, uh, a, the plate has a rift, uh, it's called the, 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 the Mid-Atlantic um, uh, Ridge, and, uh, and this, uh, you know, volcanoes just, just come up, you know, right, right there, uh, and uh, from the North Atlantic to the South Atlantic. Uh, and um, uh, so you get this island, so volcanoes build land, um, and in Hawaii, for example, uh, uh, you know, volcano is building land and it's even building an island that's off the coast uh, of, uh, of the big island. 
Uh, so in about, oh, I can't remember, but I think it's like 100 million years, there's going to be another island um, uh, in Hawaii. We better take our vitamins so we can be around for that. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, you know, there's a, a company that started selling land there, but uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's actually a bit of a joke. Every April Fool's, they have a, a they, they charter a boat and they have a homeowners association meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah, I, so, I was tempted. So if I go on vacation with you, we're probably going to a volcano together, yes, right? You don't course. go to a beach, you go to a volcano. Yes, right. Yeah, sometimes you get beaches near volcanoes, so that's really nice. The best of both worlds. Yeah. So why, why Antarctica? Because really we're here to talk about your trip to Antarctica. Okay. Well, uh, you know, let's start with the first, uh, first picture there. Uh, all right. So uh, Antarctica, because Erebus is the only active volcano in Antarctica. Erebus is there. And uh, I wanted to go to Erebus. Erebus is an active volcano. It has a lava lake. Um, you see that picture of a lava lake? That means in the crater uh, there is a lake of lava. And lava lakes are very rare on Earth. You know, there are like six or seven volcanoes only that have lava lakes. And, but I have studied uh, Jupiter's moon Io. You know, if we go to the next picture, uh, here you see Io, also called the pizza moon, because it uh, kind of looks like a pizza. Uh, <laughs> looks like uh, a vegetarian pizza to me, I gotta tell you. I don't, yeah, know. I don't yeah, see any, okay. don't see any you know, meat like on the, there. The, the, the olives, you know, the, the <laughs> black pots. But all those black pots are actually hot lava. Uh, you know, Io is a very volcanic uh, moon. Mm. I have given a talk here about Io. Okay, years ago, but I won't go into much detail. But we think that a lot of the volcanoes are actually lava lakes. Uh, so I like to study them on Earth. And, uh, you know, and I've been to, um, you know, quite a few, like in Vanuatu, in the, um, uh, in the Pacific, and also Ethiopia, in the Afar region, which is a really not very good place to travel, but, um, but the volcano was wonderful. And, uh, and the next one I want to go to is um, Niragongo in the Congo. Unfortunately, there is either civil war or Ebola or, you know, something. I'm going to pass on that invite, by the well, way. Well, I, I, I'm kind of waiting for things to calm down. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? What, what does a volcanic lake smell like? Is it sulfur? Sulfurous, is that, yes, yes. And do you have to have a rebreather when you're around uh, that? Or? No, unless you were... I, I carry a gas mask, mm -hmm. um, uh, but... Um, only in very rare circumstances I have had to use it. Um, uh, uh, one of the volcanoes in Vanuatu that has a lava lake, uh, uh, we did have to have our gas masks for some of the time. Because I've read that it's very, very, very dangerous for your lungs to breathe in volcanic... Yeah, it depends for how long and, mm. you know, uh, but um, uh, it has um, sulfur dioxide, uh, also hydrogen sulfide, and, that's what gives that rotten egg smell. Mm. Uh, you know, it depends on the percentage and all that. The majority of the gas that comes out of volcanoes is actually steam, mm. it's water. Too bad we can't like make combust some sort of combustion out of that. Like, is there some like energy source that we can well, get out of all this hot lava? Uh, actually, you can get geothermal energy mm -hmm. from volcanoes mm -hmm. uh, in places like Iceland. You know, Iceland has very cheap energy uh, because it can use mm -hmm. geothermal energy from uh, the volcanoes. Not really a big problem for us Angelinos, but for the rest of the mm -hmm. country, they could probably use some <laughs> of that. So in Antarctica, you had an artists and writers program, which I would love to know about. Yeah, okay. So, uh, you know, what, what happened really is that I, I wanted to go to Erebus, and I thought, uh, all right, let me think of a research project, and then I thought, well, I don't really have time for that, and uh, there is a lot of competition, and then I heard of this artists and writers program, uh, and uh, that they actually take artists and writers to Antarctica, and the idea is that these people will then bring the beauty of Antarctica to the rest of the world. Um, so I, um, 
you know, I contacted them, and at first I thought, well, I've written several books, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a writer, but they didn't really want that. I think the kind of writer they wanted was like a poetry or literary one, you know, not just a scientist who writes books. And then, uh, you know, I thought, artists, well, actually, I do know a space artist, and a space artist uh, is a person who uh, does art inspired by space. Uh, and in fact, I had written uh, two books with a space artist called Michael Carroll. Um, and uh, uh, there he is in the picture. We are there in Antarctica. And uh, so I thought, if I had Michael Carroll in the proposal, then, you know, he's an artist, right? So I, I called him up, uh, he lives in Colorado, and I said, Mike, how would you like to go to Antarctica? And I thought he was going to say, are you out of your mind? Uh, but in fact, he loved the idea. So uh, we wrote this proposal. Well, I largely wrote it, and then I sent it to him, and I said, put in, like, artist words, you know? I don't, oops, sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to plug that in for you? You, you, you look like you came unplugged. Yeah, came unplugged. Um, so now, now we have this great tool. You don't have to worry about it because we have chat GPT. So all you have to say is make it artistic. And it, it, yeah, that's right. Poetry for penguins. Yeah, so, you know, exactly. Whatever. <laughs> May, maybe that would have worked. OK, so then you got the grant or whatever. Yeah, we got, yeah they got the grant. Actually, Mike was the what's called the principal investigator mm -hmm. because he was the artist. I was just a helper. <laughs> so uh, uh, he, he actually got one dollar. Uh, and I'm glad it was him, because it would have caused problems with JPL, you know, <laughs> if I had gotten one dollar from the National Science Foundation without a lot of paperwork. So, um, uh, and, but they paid for our trip. Mm -hmm. So I actually went on vacation, you know, it was not official work. Um, so, you know, you get your flight and then, you know, all your... It's a long trip. I've never been, but I hear it's... it's yeah. There's no direct flights to Antarctica from uh, L.A. Uh, no, actually, unfortunately not. If we go to the next picture, um, uh, you know, do we have the map there? Who knows what we have? Who knows if anybody's in the control room? We love them. Uh, 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 right, okay. Let's talk about... Well, you have to go to new... Uh, there, there, there you go. Uh, there are several ways, um, but, um, you know, I went... Uh, well, Mike as well, uh, we flew to New Zealand, uh, to Auckland, then to Christchurch, uh, and uh, the Antarctica planes go from Christchurch. So I, I read that Mount Erebus is 3,700 meters, 3,794, so what, 12,500 feet, roughly? Yeah. It seems pretty like a, a, a trudge in Antarctica getting up there. I mean, w w was that technically challenging to get up, or is, uh, well, uh, is there a little, no, like, hiking trail you No, up, no, or? you don't have to hike, uh, you know, luckily. Um, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, they actually have helicopters that uh, take you most of the way, uh, and then you have to hike some of the way. And so it, it's not technical at all, climbing up something like uh, that? No, no. Um, and, uh, um, you know, where are we in the pictures? I think I'm a little... I think there's no pictures right now. Uh, um, I'm a little lost right now. That's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. well, I mean, were you apprehensive about it at all? Did you, I mean, going uh, to a place like that, I would well, imagine would be a little scary. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> the, the thing I was most afraid of was the cold, because I hate cold well, weather. Well, you're a Brazilian lady. Yeah, I'm yeah. Brazilian. Yeah. I completely hate cold weather, uh, and snow, and ice, and, and, and all that. But because there was a volcano there, you know, I'll, I'll do a lot to go to a volcano. You know, I, I hate cold, and, and I hate bugs. But uh, I have been to, yeah, and I know, I mean, you tough adventurers, you know, you probably eat bugs. We do. Uh, uh, we have had bugs. Yeah, while uh, climbing up the ice. But uh, I don't like bugs and I don't like ice. But uh, no bugs in Antarctica. So that, but I hear that great. bugs may be the diet of the new you know, millennium. Uh, like, by 2050, be, we're going to be eating like uh, cucarachas, right? They're very nutritious uh, uh, well, and they grow very quickly. Uh, well, could be. You know, I hope they kind of make them pate. I hope they make like dirty water roaches, you know, you know like, so, like um, hot dogs, dirty water New York but, hot dogs. But, 
but um, uh, you know, anyway, I think we're getting some pictures back, uh, are we? Um, uh, because I, I have some really nice pictures. So hey, I, do you get scared on any of these trips? Um, well, not not so much. Uh, I mean, it, it, there is always a risk, and uh, um, you know you're very isolated. Uh, so uh, you know you better be healthy. In fact, before you get permission to go to Antarctica, you have to go to your doctor and go to your dentist and get all kinds of uh, certifications. That, your dentist? Uh, Why the dentist? Oh, because you know if you have toothache in Antarctica, it's not. So good. Yeah, I guess uh, so. They do have some um, magical facilities there, uh, but it, it's limited. Even at McMurdo Base, what they can do. You look like a flosser, though. I bet your teeth are in really good shape. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, my dentist thought so. So yeah. wh what can go wrong on a trip like this? I mean, starting with a helicopter, which are intrinsically dangerous vehicles. Yes. yes. Um, you know, weather. Uh, you know, weather is the, the main problem, um, and uh, uh, if we get pictures— um, how, how, many, uh, how, how long was this trip, by the way? I, I didn't get a sense of how long oh, it was. Oh, okay. It actually turned out not to be so long. I think we were there for like two and a half weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, because we had really good weather most of the time. Uh, so when you go to New Zealand, uh, you get what's called, they, they give you an ice date. The ice date is the day that your flight is going to go from New Zealand uh, to Antarctica, to McMurdo. Is it weather permitting? Is that? Uh, weather permitting, okay. and almost nobody gets out on their ice date. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we, we go on uh, these military planes, the um, um, C-130s, I think it is. Uh, no and, drink service on that, I'll bet. Uh, no, no. Um, but, uh, you know, pretty comfortable. You know, it, it, it beats uh, economy class any okay. day. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and we, you can get up and walk around and, you know, no, no one's complaining. Go put your seatbelt on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, uh, and and the actually is a very interesting flight because uh, sometimes the weather looks good, but then the weather changes very rapidly. So uh, you know when it goes halfway, uh, there is a point of no return, and uh, uh, so they you know they communicate and say okay the weather is still good you know we'll go on and the weather better be good, <laughs> because you have to land mm. <laughs> at that stage. Uh, but you, um, uh, they, advi you know, they put all your luggage in these you know, big cargo things, but they say you can have with you a boomerang bag. And that is, if you have the boomerang back, if your flight has to come back, that's what you're allowed to take with you back to your hotel. Oh, because you're, you're, everything stays packed in yeah, the Yeah, everything you gotta, stays gotta, packed, gotta. yes. Okay, so, so we were talking about what could go wrong. So then you land and you're, you helicopter yeah. out, or? Uh, well, no, you land and then uh, you go to uh, McMurdo, uh, because you have to have a lot of training. I mean, they, they kind of don't let you out mm -hmm. uh, until you have had some training. So the training starts in, in New Zealand. Uh, and you know we went to like uh, get you know get our clothes our warm clothes in New Zealand you know they like have this big warehouse uh, where they have all the coats and boots and whatever uh, and uh, and they give you your first spiel there uh, because the uh, you know if McMurdo base um, uh, you know that's not Erebus it's McMurdo is down here on the Ross Ice shelf. And, uh, uh, but, you know, there are several buildings, and sometimes the weather is so bad that even going between buildings can be dangerous. Sometimes they have to put ropes uh, wow. in between the buildings so that, you know, you- Because of the wind. It, it, it wind and the visibility. Wow. And sometimes you absolutely can't see. Um, so the, uh, uh, yeah, I remember that the first, uh, training session, and also we were told like what to do about you know boomerang bag and all this kind of thing uh, was uh, given by a New Zealander, a very nice guy. But I was still jet lagged, and uh, and I kept hearing chicken, chicken. It's like what 
chicken. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I, I went for lunch uh, with Mike, and he said, did you hear him say chicken? And I said, yes. And he said, I figured out this check-in. I got New but Zealander. New Zealand guys. Got it, got and, and I kept uh, trying to figure out what was this, this chickens. Uh, <laughs> now, do you have to worry about polar bears down there? Or like no polar, polar bears, bears down there? No, no penguins, um, because McMurdo is uh, far from the ocean, mm -hmm. well, somewhat mm -hmm. far from the ocean. So, um, uh, you know, there, there, there is only one form of life that I saw other than humans, and that is a bird called a skua. Uh, is a, it's like a big seagull, and it's a scavenger hunt. Mm. And what does it live uh, off of? Uh, if hunt. It, it lives off, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, 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 You're a volcanologist, not uh, a bird right, expert. Yeah, I'm not a biologist, but I, I think it, uh, I think it largely, it, it, it goes to the ocean for fish, uh, but then uh, it, it can fly uh, inland enough that, uh, it, you know, you see it around McMurdo sometimes. Okay, so you're uh, walking around the base, grabbing the rope, trying not to get lost, and how many days are you there before you fly oh, out? It was like a week, because mm -hmm. we had all this training, but we also, mm, I can see the picture now, there are a lot, there's a lot of research going on at McMurdo, mm -hmm. and people set up labs there, uh, and there are, I am with the biologists, you know, saying, you know, holding up some cute thing. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they even had um, a colleague of mine doing the first DNA sequencing in Antarctica, you know, the collecting, uh, uh, you know, microbes from, um, uh, because, yes, you have microbes and, uh, in but the Is ice. this where they bore into the ice um, and they take samples, uh, you know, like? Yeah, they, yeah they, but they don't always need to bore into the ice. Sometimes they mm -hmm. can, uh, you know, just collect surface material. Uh, so people are flown out and helicoptered out to mm -hmm. various locations, mm -hmm. and um, now there were about, I suppose, close to a thousand people at McMurdo. So it's a it's a big hopping place. And and how many of those are going to the volcano? A oh, very few. Very few. And in fact, they were all. Oh, and people make jokes, you know, uh, because of the weather. Uh, and uh, and the you know the fact that the, uh, the planes get delayed and uh, you know or there is a lack of of, of planes and uh, uh, so the, the, it's a very lively place um, you know a lot of social life a lot of activity uh, and a lot of training you know classroom work um, we also did training on crevasses and getting out of crevasses and. Now, are you roped up when you're going? Um, well. When you're on the volcano? Uh, no, no, okay. actually we weren't, but uh, you know, uh, you, you just have to do a basic training for yeah. everything because there could have been some places that we could have gone to that uh, you would have had to be roped up. So you're there for a week, you, now it's helicopter time, it's game yeah. time, tell yeah. me about that. Yeah, okay, let's go to the next um, uh, pictures. Um, uh, oh, I think uh, I think you were going. Okay, uh, these are a bit out of order. Okay, helicopter time. Yes, you 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 fly to um, uh, to um, uh, to, to a, 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 a not quite a midway point. It's higher than that, about nine thousand feet. Uh, it's a very small camp uh, with uh, with scotch tents. Uh, and, uh, and there are like five tents. And you have to stay there for two nights to get used to the altitude. Mm -hmm. And it's the most miserable uh, place. Really? Uh, because... Do tell. Uh, we, well, we love misery here at the Adventures uh, yeah, I know, I know you love misery. And uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's cold. You are suffering from, you know, the altitude because the air is thin and... Uh, uh, and uh, uh, you don't feel like doing anything. There is nothing to do anyway. Uh, that's it. The, 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 you, you, see, you see it there. Uh, yeah, one, it doesn't look fun. Yeah, one of the That's tents, not Ipanema, that's for sure. No, one of the tents is a bathroom tent, and then uh, you have the other tents, and you cook in one tent, and uh, you can't have really heating inside the tent because it's dangerous because of carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. In fact, some people, a few months before us, nearly died because of that. They turned off the stove and, uh, uh, 
uh, and uh, you know, fortunately, uh, there were two of them, and one of them said, you know, I'm going to go outside because I feel this headache, and uh, then started walking outside, felt better, and somehow realized what was going on, and uh, and went back, and his companion was fainted, but um, wow. uh, he pulled her out, and she was fine. So and you're there for two days, okay? So you go through altitude. Two, yeah, two, two days and two nights, uh, and uh, and yes, we could go on some little hikes, but I mean, there is really nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, and uh, I know I wanted to, uh, you know, show pe people that. That's one of Michael Carroll's paintings. Uh, wow, it's stunningly and, beautiful. Yeah, and uh, and that was from this place was called Fang Glacier. And, uh, and we joked that Fang became a four-letter word for us uh, because it was really miserable. Um, and, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, he did sketches and uh, uh, took photos. And when he came back, he mm -hmm. did that painting. And he sent me a photo and email. So I bought it from him. And uh, I have it hanging by my front door because every day I feel like, Whatever today brings, I survived that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it can't be any more miserable than the Fang Glacier. <laughs> okay, so now you've done your two days, your yeah. uh, climate ready. Right. What, what's next? Uh, next is you go to the what's called the Arabus Hut. Uh, so a, a helicopter comes to pick you up, and you go to that hut. Unfortunately, that hut is only for meals. It's heated. Uh, you know, which is great, but you're supposed to camp, uh, and uh, um, uh, you know, and we actually took tents with us. And now you guys are really going to laugh at this, but you know, whenever I went on an expedition, you know, I I don't camp for fun. I only camp when. I'm in an expedition, and there is a volcano there, and I really want to go, because I think camping for fun is kind of nuts. Uh, <laughs> so I always had people around who put up the tent for me, uh, you know? And, uh, and so they, they give us, Mike and I, each a tent, and uh, say, you know, go to your, you know, like the common room of your dorm, and make sure there are no parts missing, you know? put up these tents. Uh, and, and is Michael a camper, or are you both against camping? Well, that was the thing. I thought, well, he lives in Colorado. He likes to hike. Surely he's a camper. Well, Mike detests camping. He's like a Four Seasons camper. Yeah. So, uh, you know, neither of us was really sure how to put up a tent. Uh, and I thought, come on, we're intelligent. Come on, Rosalie, you have a PhD. I know, we can figure this out. So we, we put up one of the tents, and it's actually it's a, quite a sizable tent. And then he looks at me and he said, uh, uh, should we, you know, put up the other one? And I said, um, well, there's enough room for two people here. Mm -hmm. uh, would your wife mind, you know, if uh, the other tent has something wrong? And he said, no, no, she wouldn't mind at all. You know what they say, what happens on Mount Erebus stays on Mount Erebus. Uh, believe me, uh, on Mount Erebus, you don't feel like doing anything like that. It's the most unromantic place. And how, how's your relationship with Michael's wife now? It's okay? Oh, is, yes, is she going to find out about this for the first it, time tonight? It, it's oh, it's fine. Uh, and, uh, but when we got to Erebus, um, they said, well, you know, you're only going to be here a few days. If you don't want to put up your tents, uh, we have that structure there to store stuff. But you can actually stay there. That looks and, lovely. And we, we thought it was like the Ritz. You know, you can see inside, you know, you can stand up. There was even a small stove. And uh, I mean, it was luxury. It was amazing. Uh, you know, I mean, when your alternative is to camp on the ice, uh, you know, somewhere that's a little bit off the ice, it's it's real life. You really appreciate it. Yeah. 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 It's so a good perspective on life, right? Yeah. That's Suffering a little gives you a good perspective, I yeah. would say. So, you know, that's the, uh, so the Arabus camp uh, is, you know, uh, I can't remember exactly, but, you know, it's a, a few hundred feet below the actual summit mm -hmm. of Arabus. Mm -hmm. uh, so we... Um, 
you know, stay there, did some exploration uh, nearby before we went to the summit. So, you know, maybe we go along, get the next picture, and uh, uh, you, can, way, you can see Erebus right there. But Erebus has these amazing ice towers. Uh, and, um, you know, they are formed by uh, uh, essentially steam, uh, volcanic gases, you know, uh, coming up and then condensing, uh, freezing. Uh, and so they, they form these towers that are beautiful. It also has ice caves that, um, you know, are just the most beautiful thing. I'm sure some of you have been in ice caves before. Uh, and they were just amazing. Um, so that's me in my big coat. And uh, seems like the weather was quite nice. Oh yes, I, I mean we were so lucky with the weather. Mm. Uh, it was uh, just incredible. Uh, so the the weather was very nice. So that's why the trip was actually shorter than than I expected because you know everything went right uh, the weather was fantastic so what what are you studying when you're out there like what you t take me through your sort of scientific uh, analysis of this or what you're going through okay well uh, you know one uh, the, the purpose for you know mike uh, um, in our collaboration uh, was um, to use this antarctic landscapes uh, to uh, imagine what landscapes on um, uh, other planets and moons would be like. Uh, so he did some paintings, and that's one of them. That's um, uh, in, uh, Enceladus, uh, which is a moon of Saturn, an icy moon. So we know that Enceladus has venting. Maybe there are ice towers uh, mm -hmm. formed uh, on, um, uh, on Enceladus. Uh, so it's like analogy, and uh, and uh, you know, and that's a painting he did of Triton, which is a, a moon of Neptune. Um, so you know, he does, and I was advising on, you know, what these landscapes could look like on other worlds. Uh, but I also have had my own little project, which um, unfortunately didn't work too well because the volcano uh, didn't cooperate very well. I took an like bad volcano. It, well, it, there was just too much steam. Mm -hmm. um, I took an infrared camera and I was trying to, you know, take temperature measurements of the lava lake, um, uh, but. Um, uh, you know, there, there was just, you know, too many gases mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't get good data. Um, uh, that's a nice cave, by the way, and this was our guide. Uh, we were assigned a, a guide, uh, a guy named Ivan, who was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and, um, you know, he, you know, really knew uh, what to do. I mean, they don't leave you there kind of completely alone unless you have had a lot of training and been there before. But these ice caves were just the most extraordinary thing. And some of my colleagues actually do research on ice caves because they try to collect, uh, you know, microbes uh, and um, uh, see what's, what's living there, which might be similar to what, um, at least in the conditions that we might find, uh, you know, in other worlds. So, how many days are you out there? Is uh, it just one day, or you're no, out there no, for no, several we days? No, right? no, uh, We were there for like um, a week. No, f uh, five. I think five, six days. Uh, and um, and I found out later that in fact you can do quote day trips to Erebus, uh, and then guess what? You don't have to stay at Fang. Uh, <laughs> that's for next time. <laughs> You're going back. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, at the moment, there is a, a, a Brazilian uh, television producer I worked with before who wants to do a documentary. So, uh, uh, he, you know, he's trying to get, you know, it, it's quite difficult to get a slot, mm -hmm. uh, either from the New Zealand side or the McMurdo side. But, you know, we're, we're trying to do that. Hey, yeah. what, what is the temperature of a lava lake? I have no idea. Uh, well, it depends on the, uh, generally they are basaltic, so, um, you know, uh, about 1,200 Celsius, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, you know, then the crust cools and might be like 800, 900 C. Mm. And, and you don't go inside the volcano at all? Uh, You're just on the rim, or? Uh, yeah, I, I was, well, the volcano is the whole big thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I hiked to the top. 
actually on Christmas Day, which was very nice. Uh, and um, uh, we were at the edge uh, of the crater uh, looking down. Uh, and uh, and it, there is a photograph of me actually trying to get my measurements on the edge of the lava lake. And, and, and how far down is the lava lake? Is it uh, hundreds of feet? Is it? Uh, yeah, it was, um, uh, let's see, uh, trying to think about, you know, maybe, you know, um, 100 meters down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and there is uh, the Explorers Club flag uh, on the volcano. It was, I actually got a, an official flag from the Explorers Club. Impressive. To take on, on this trip. Um, and is it, uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to get a, an understanding of like, like, like what does a volcano sound like with a volcanic lake? Is there a, is it like bubbling and gurgling or? Now, there is, a, there wasn't a lot of sound. It's more the sound of uh, the gas, mm -hmm. you know, some whooshing and sometimes lava makes a kind of like a crackling sound that's almost like broken glass, mm -hmm. you know, in mm -hmm. itself. Um, uh, but um, I didn't really, uh, I don't remember hearing that. Uh, and that's, that's a photo. You see there is a lot, there was a lot of steam, uh, so uh, it was not really possible to see the, uh, you know, the actual lava. And, and, and are you able to hike around the entire volcano or is there sort of an entry point that you go to and everybody goes to? Um, well, there was a path mm -hmm. uh, up because we got snowmobiles from the uh, hut uh, to close to the top, but you can't take them all the way to the top because the heat around the crater just melts the snow. Mm. Uh, so uh, you have to hike. Um, but um, uh, you, you know, it, I mean, as I said, you know, the volcano is the whole big thing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we were on all the time. Uh, the, you know, the crater, uh, yes, you can hike around. Mm. So were there any aha moments for you, you know, things that you didn't expect or you hadn't seen before? Uh, well, I had not seen ice towers before mm -hmm. uh, and I had not seen ice caves. And uh, and I think the m what you know wh the, the 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 moment like wow uh, was uh, really in uh, ice caves because they're just so incredibly beautiful. Um, how, how deep were some of these ice caves? Because they can be quite deep and dangerous as well. For what yes, I hear. Uh, well we, we didn't uh, you know we went a few um, uh, you know may maybe. 50 feet. Uh, we didn't go very deep, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, because you know there was really no reason uh, for us to go very deep, and uh, and we went only in caves that um, uh, you know they called dirty caves. That is that um, you know humans have contaminated mm -hmm. before. Uh, there are some pristine caves on Erebus where you actually have to you know go suited up when you're you know doing more, uh, you know, biology mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're very well lit, right? I mean, you can see the, it, yeah, it's coming yeah. through the, uh, the yeah, ice, right, yeah, the sunlight? And there's this beautiful blue light, and that's what amazed me the most. I, uh, uh, you know, I did, uh, you know, I did not know they could be so beautiful. And, and then I, I didn't feel cold at all, <laughs> I, you know, when you're kind of in that, in those wow moments, actually at the top of the volcano as well, because, you know, it was quite an emotional thing for me to, you know, be at, uh, in Antarctica, uh, you know, my last continent to go to and to be on an actual volcano. Uh, on. So this was on a bucket list? Yes, it was exactly bucket list. And not many people have um, been to active volcanoes on every continent. Mm. Wow, you've been to volcanoes on every continent. Oh yeah, yeah. The A moon's active ones. The moon is what's left for you, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, you know there is still that dream. <laughs> if, if Richard Branson called you and wanted you to go to the moon to see a volcano, would you go? Of course. I love that about yeah. you. Yeah. Even though it's cold. <laughs> so what, what, what other takeaways did you have? What other scientific work did you do while you were there? Uh, 
Well, uh, you know, mostly I uh, started reading about um, uh, Erebus and, uh, you know, that, that particular lava lake, mm -hmm. uh, you know, talk to colleagues, because um, there were like uh, 10 of us uh, up on Erebus, uh, including uh, one colleague who had recently been hired at JPL, mm -hmm. one young man who had done his PhD on Erebus. I, um, you know, so there is, I wasn't there really to do a scientific project other than I tried to get a little data. Uh, you know, I was there to, uh, you know, do this book, which is over there uh, with, uh, with Mike Caro. And is your artist person, is he painting in the field or is he taking pictures? Uh, he's sketching, uh, he did some paintings. Uh, at Mac, mostly at McMurdo, uh, but um, you know when the wind is howling and it's really cold, it's kind of hard to paint. Uh, but uh, you know here we are back at uh, at McMurdo, and uh, and then uh, we got out of Erebus, in fact, just in time. Uh, hold that one there. Um, uh, we. Um, uh, the the the, the um, manager there there is a uh, there was a female who was sort of managing the operations um, at the uh, at Erebus, and she said, "Well, this this helicopter is coming up, and uh, if you've done everything you wanted to do, uh, you can go down with it because they have space for two people." And I said to Mike, um, uh, "You know." we should take this chance because, you know, we, we done what we wanted to do uh, and uh, the weather might turn bad. And in fact, the day after we came down, because then you don't have to go to Fang, you just come You don't have to re-acclimatize, yeah, you just no, go to Fang. Yeah. Just go straight down. But the day after, the weather turned really bad and the other people were stuck there for a week uh, because helicopters couldn't get up there. And uh, so we got to McMurdo, there are some other, you know, interesting things to do uh, around McMurdo. We had done a lot of training. You can go on some hikes. And that's Scott's hut, uh, very historic. Uh, and uh, so we went to the hut. Uh, we went inside the hut, which I think is in the next slide. Uh, and and w w what's the history of it? Uh, uh, well, it was during the exploration of Antarctica. Uh, they uh, they actually built this hut, and they stayed there for, for months, as far as I uh, remember. And the conditions were, you know, really awful. Uh, <laughs> worse than uh, than being at Fang, I think. <laughs> uh, and Plenty of ice for your martinis, right? That's not a problem making ice. No, up no. Uh, actually, we um, we could go to. Um, uh, in fact, once once a week, the 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 New Zealand um, base was nearby. Uh, it's called Scott Base, and uh, once a week they would let the Americans come to their bar. Uh, so, um, you know, I was there a couple of times. Um, I, I think I had a picture of that somewhere, but... Um, so uh, what's your deliverable at the end? Like, you got this grant to go to Antarctica uh, to... The book, uh, yeah. So yeah. Is, is that what you deliver at the end of it? Yeah, yes, the book is what I delivered. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, you know, when you see here uh, the cover of the book, I, I brought just a few copies in case, you know, people want one or they want to, to look at it. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, if you just go back one picture, I just wanted to show that um, uh, I, I brought back something kind of special. Um, no, no, go back. Uh, uh, th those are some of Michael Caro's paintings mm -hmm. uh, that he did. So what uh, did you bring back? Uh, I brought back a Christmas ornament and that I took that photo uh, from my Christmas tree uh, mm -hmm. just you know, a month ago, uh, and, uh, and it's a Scott hat. Uh, and they sell this in the uh, shop at McMurdo, because McMurdo actually has a shop. Uh, so that was my souvenir. Nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, and in fact, I, I, I have a colleague who is also a plantar geologist who happened to be at McMurdo at the same time, but for a different project. And, uh, um, uh, you know, she's called Janie Radebo. She um, is a professor at Brigham Young University. And, uh, and we joke that um, uh, we have actually been to every continent, 
uh, one time or another at the same time, and we have shopped together in every continent. <laughs> <laughs> It's a girl thing, I think. It's though. a girl thing, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and what is the book about? It's just about the entire trip from it's, beginning to end? It, yes, it's about the, tri the entire trip, but also about the exploration of Antarctica and Erebus and uh, you know, the first expedition to go up Erebus. Uh, so there is some history and, uh, you know, and then um, uh, there is you know, science, the kinds of uh, projects that we saw other scientists uh, doing uh, in Antarctica. And, uh, um, you know, and then you know, our experiences and um, uh, you know, even kind of some diary entries that um, uh, we did you know, before and after uh, and during. Uh, so um, it's, uh, yeah, you know, people liked it. <laughs> so would you say that volcanoes are well studied in, in the world? Do you, do, you feel like, uh, do you feel like the world needs more volcanologists? Well, um, you know, uh, good question. You know, we have learned a lot about volcanoes, particularly in the last few decades. Uh, but there is still a lot to learn. Uh, and for example, some volcanoes you can predict when they're going to erupt really well. Um, you know, Hawaii, really well behaved volcanoes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just in a special situation where the, uh, you know, the magma chamber is relatively shallow, so when magma is coming up, the volcano inflates, and they can measure that and say pretty well more or less, when the volcano is going to erupt, where that fissure is going to be. Other volcanoes are really, really hard to predict. Uh, you know, and then there are volcanoes that have just like sudden explosions. Um, is that because there's a tectonic shift of some no, sort? No, no, sometimes it's, it, it, it's, it's just like uh, maybe there is an accumulation of gases. Mm -hmm. or, uh, I was on Mount Etna, uh, this was many years ago, I did a lot of my PhD work on Mount Etna. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, my second trip there, um, I was with my advisor and others about a mile from the main crater, and they used to take tourists up to the crater all, all the time. Uh, and suddenly we, we didn't hear anything, but we saw this big um, dark ash cloud. Uh, and we thought, whoa, you know, what happened? Uh, and, uh, and, you know, when we got in our Land Rover, started driving up and then met one of the tourist Land Rovers with a big hole in the, on, the, on the roof. And the guide who was driving stopped and said, you know, help us rescue people. There are people killed, people hurt. There was just a sudden explosion, probably because, you know, it had rained, some, uh, you know, water uh, got mixed in the magma and, you know, water, hot magma. There was some collapse in the crater. Maybe it just kind of choked mm -hmm. and then it spit it out. And there wasn't even any new lava. It was just like, you know, blocks from the crater. So it's, it's rocks that are killing the people, not hot lava. It's well, it depends on the situation. Yeah. In this situation, uh, it was, uh, you know, just this, this rocks came out. And, uh, and earlier that day, uh, we had been doing uh, what was, uh, well, people don't do that anymore in, in surveying, you know, now everything is so automated, but we're doing a, what's called a leveling traverse because we're trying to figure out if there was inflation, like from year to year on the mm -hmm. volcano. And, um, uh, and we couldn't get a measurement because when you look through uh, the little, you know, the odd light, um, things were moving up and down. So there was some tremor going on. And whether that was related or not, we don't know. Are, are they able to put sensors deep in these that can deal with that kind of heat? Uh, well, you know, you don't need to put them that deep. Mm -hmm. uh, and these days, yes, there are a lot of sensors that we can, you know, this was more than 30 years ago. So what do they measure <laughs> now with the sensors? Well, <coughs> mostly it's um, uh, seismometers mm -hmm. that you put around the volcano. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you know that, that that's the main thing. But there are the signs that the volcano is um, 
uh, uh, might erupt, even changes in the gases. Uh, you know, so people do uh, measurements of gases and the chemistry uh, of the gases. We observe, you know, volcanoes from space. Um, uh, you know, now with GPS, you can get very sensitive measurements of uh, of movement, uh, of inflation. So there is a lot that uh, that, that can be done, uh, and it depends where the volcano is located. Uh, you have more, you know money and effort going to monitor it, uh, if it's in a populated area, or less. Uh, because, um, you know, maybe if it's like in a remote island off Alaska, it's not quite as important. So you're part of our Trailblazing Women series uh, mm -hmm. this year, and I'm interested, is, is volcanology male-dominated, female-dominated, 50-50? Well, it, 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 I think it's still mostly male-dominated, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, there are a number of women uh, volcanologists, and, uh, um, you know, frankly, I never particularly cared about that kind of thing, <laughs> you know, like, uh, I just do what I want to do. Um, and, uh, you know, if my colleagues are male or female, that's fine. Now, you knew that famous couple that the movie was yeah, made, yeah. A Fire of Love, right? Right, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about them? Because it's a fascinating story. Uh, yes, Maurice and Katya, a French couple. Um, they uh, both got degrees in geology. Uh, they did not go on for, like, PhD-type research, but they loved volcanoes, and they travel to volcanoes and volcanic eruptions around the world, and they did very fine photography. And they met and through volcanoes, like they had I separate think, I think lives, I, and then— I think, actually, they met uh, in school, oh, okay. uh, uh, because they both got geology degrees, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure about that. Um, and it's like a great love story, right? Yeah, and they, they had this incredible passion for volcanoes, and they did— really crazy stuff. Uh, like what? Like, what's the craziest thing they did? Uh, well, um, you know, uh, I'm very careful around explosive volcanoes, uh, because uh, what's called pyroclastic flows uh, is just about the most deadly thing a volcano can put out. That's what happened at Pompeii, for example, and, you know, killed the people at Pompeii and Herculaneum. The ash, right? It was the ash yeah. that Yeah, well, them. it's actually, you know, a volcano explodes, there's this column of ash, it gets dense, it essentially collapses mm -hmm. and flows, mm -hmm. and it can flow at, you know, hundreds of miles per hour. Uh, it can flow really fast, it has so much energy, it can go uphill, uh, and, uh, and if you are in the path of one of those things, uh, you know, there is no escape. And it's interesting, because I always think of, of lavas moving incredibly no, slow. No lava, no, lava moves very slowly. Okay. This is not lava. Lava is molten rock. Mm. Uh, and lava, yeah, you can walk over moving lava, you know, if it's crusting You enough. can. I'm not walking over moving lava. <laughs> right. You're the volcanologist. Right, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I had a colleague who... Uh, told me he was on Mount Etna, he was asked to show, you know, some students around, and there was an active lava flow. So he said, it took me years working on volcanoes to have this courage to, you know, have the courage to walk over a, a moving lava flow, but he decided to do it to show off to the students. Uh, I'm sure there were some girl, did he, does girls he have, there. Does he have prosthetic feet now? Uh, no, 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 he was fine. Okay. But then he looked around, and all the students followed him onto the flow, all taking pictures of each other. You know? Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, um, you know, no fear. Uh, so um, so what, what would you say to a young uh, geology student about a career in volcanology? How would you describe it, and, and are you an advocate of people going into this career? Path? Well, I'm an advocate of of people doing whatever they are passionate about. Mm. Uh, and I wasn't passionate about volcanoes at first. I, uh, you know, as I said, my degree was in astronomy. I took a class in planetary geology, and uh, uh, the professor was very good. He became my PhD advisor. And about, I don't know, three weeks, a month into the course, he didn't show up. Mm. And uh, a postdoc came to give the class, and he said, um, 
Well, Mount Etna erupted and the professor had to go. And I thought, oh, that sounds really exciting. And uh, you know, I thought, that sounds better than all this you know, sitting on this Studying telescope. rocks. No, no, I wasn't actually telescope domes. Mm. You no, know, it was really cold. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, just pointing the telescopes and, uh, uh, you know, and, the, and then the weather was bad and, and, and all that. And I thought, well, this, you know, volcano thing sounds really exciting. And I really enjoyed the class in planetary geology, which mm -hmm. is essentially use the Earth geology to, um, you know, as a way to understand the geology on other planets and moons. And uh, so um, that was my favorite class, so I asked to do a PhD with him. And I was his first PhD student who did not have a background in geology. Um, a trailblazing uh, woman, once again. Exactly, but you know, he said, "Yeah, but you, you know, you have good knowledge of physics. You can do something." <laughs> so, okay, uh, and uh, you know, and they, the geologists used to joke with me. You know, this is a rock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have any volcano jokes that we should know about? <laughs> not that, not that I can okay, think good. of. But dirty, uh, dirty volcano uh, jokes. No, uh, no, no dirty <laughs> volcano jokes. It's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know if you have any more time, but I would love to open the floor up to some sure, questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, do we ahead. have somebody with a mic that uh, yeah. can <laughs> go on? Lance, do you uh, want to take the mic around to some of our esteemed guests tonight? Thank you. A fascinating talk. It, Thank uh, you. I was just down in Antarctica, as I said, and it, it, it's just so amazing. It's, uh, of all the places I've seen around the world, Antarctica is so, so special. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's just, the, the beauty is hard to describe. Thank you. Um, you mentioned, um, just in passing, your, your experience at the volcano at Vanuatu. I was there also at Mount Yasser. Uh, so can you please describe your experience at Mount Yasser volcano in Vanuatu to the others who have not yet been there? How right, I, um, yeah, so the Vanuatu archipelago is not terribly well known, uh, but um, it's got, uh, you know, uh, several, uh, they're all volcanic islands, and in fact, uh, uh, there is one island called Yazur uh, that, um, uh, sorry, it's Tana Island, Yazur is the volcano, uh, and uh, that is a wonderful volcano to visit. Uh, if you want to visit an active volcano. Uh, it has what we call Strombolian activity, which are small explosions. The name comes from Stromboli in, in Italy. Uh, and um, uh, as long as you stay out of the reach of these lava fragments that we call bombs that come out, you're perfectly fine. Uh, and uh, this volcano, you can, you can drive almost all the way to the top. And then they actually build steps. Uh, you no longer have to hike. First time I went there, you know, it was a very short hike. But now there are even steps. There is even like a park bench uh, by the crater. <laughs> Called the Ecker Toll, uh, Toll uh, yeah. Park Bench, it's, right? uh, You know, it, it's, it, it's, it's very nice. And, uh, and uh, the Strombolian eruptions go on and on and on. Uh, uh, for example, the Stromboli volcano in Italy, we know has been erupting for at least 2,000 years, mm -hmm. you know, because they are ancient uh, records. So that's a great volcano to visit. Uh, in fact, is what I recommend if people really want to see uh, volcanic activities safely. Um, and, uh, but there is another island uh, that, uh, Ambrim, that actually has a lava lake. In fact, sometimes two lava lakes, and uh, I went to that one as well. Um, uh, so first time to Vanuatu, I went only to Yazoo, um, second time to both. Mm. We have a question online, have you been to Mount Vesuvius? Oh yes, I actually did a, a short postdoctoral you know, fellowship uh, in Naples, and uh, uh, so I was studying hazard, volcanic hazard from uh, Vesuvius. So I, you know, I was there, um, uh, I was there several times, uh, and in fact, strangely enough, the only time I ever saw 
actually saw somebody die on a volcano was on Vesuvius, and, uh, and it was a tourist. You, you have a, a steep hike, uh, and uh, this guy just had a heart attack. Uh, and there was a doctor there, but was like, you know, couldn't, couldn't save the guy. Uh, so, it happens. You know, it, 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 and it's ironic that, you know, with all these volcano trips, and now it's like, you know, nothing, nothing happened. You know, even, even the one in Ethiopia that Jim Dorsey came with me, uh, uh, and, you know, and people, we had these guys with AK, 47s and people are shooting and, you know, but everybody was fine. Do we have any more questions? Yeah. So Rosalie, uh, Chuck here. So uh, you probably spent time in Indonesia. I remember one time I was in Java and on a train going through some kind of a valley and there was volcanoes on the left and on the right. We went past, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Indonesia has more volcanoes than any other country in the world. Uh, and uh, uh, it's got some, uh, it really fantastic places. Uh, it has, you know, the famous Krakatoa or Krakatau uh, that I haven't been to, uh, but um, uh, it's, um, uh, you know, it was one of the, 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 the biggest <laughs> eruptions in living history. It's got Tambora uh, that erupted earlier in uh, uh, 1815 was when it last erupted, uh, and um, uh, it, uh, uh, it, it had, it was such a, a large explosive eruption that it actually had an effect on the world's climate. Uh, volcanoes can cool the climate uh, because of uh, uh, aerosols uh, put in the atmosphere that uh, reflect, uh, cause, you know, sunlight not to penetrate so much. Mm -hmm. So for, it's like for a, you know, couple of years and it's a, it's a small, you know, maybe uh, half a degree Celsius, one degree Celsius, but that can be enough to really, um, you know, cause a noticeable effect. Uh, and um, another question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and just a, this is not a, a question about the science that you're interested in, but while you're at these volcanoes, did you ever pick up any kind of incidental information about uh, the? the people's relationships to the volcanoes, yes. virgins and all of that sort of thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, yes. It's, uh, um, uh, in fact, it's very interesting. In the, in the first book I wrote, which is called The Volcano Adventure Guide, which is because lots of people would ask me, oh, I want to go to a volcano. You know, it's like, what do I do and where do I go? And, um, you know, so it's kind of a, there are field guides to a number of volcanoes, but also, you know, the differences between volcanoes and the types where you can go to and be quite safe, you know, and then other types that if they are erupting, you should just get out of there. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, and, and one of the things I went into, into in this book was the people's relationships uh, to the volcanoes. Uh, you know, for example, in Hawaii, uh, the uh, native Hawaiians uh, understood uh, the, um, the fact that the vi volcanoes have migrated down the Hawaiian chain. Um, Hawaii is over a hot spot, and so as the plate moved uh, uh, across this hot spot, new volcanoes uh, started. Uh, so, um, uh, so there is a trend of the, the old volcanoes are in the northwest, and the young volcanoes in the southeast. Well, they understood that, and they explained it as the goddess Pele uh, trying to make a home <laughs> and, uh, and, and moving her home, and how she was in, in kind of fighting with her brother or half-brother who was the god of the ocean, you know, so the ocean comes and, uh, you know, uh, uh, cools the lava and all that. So it, it's very interesting. And then in other places like Iceland, where they Li always lived with volcanoes, uh, and they use the geothermal energy, and they um, uh, and they think that volcanoes are just a very natural, everyday thing. And you know, they come to LA, they're like, "Where are the volcanoes?" Uh, you know, um, what like, kind of major city is this? Uh, yeah, you know, it's like LA with the earthquakes. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah so. Another question. We have another question, Mr. Yeah, Greg Downing. I have, I have a question. Uh, so here you are in this uh, kind of extreme environment, uh, witnessing another volcano, and 
I, I'm just wondering, like, what, how, what went through your imagination when you thought, like, we're looking at this ice world with a volcano under it, but in our, in this case, we've got an atmosphere mm -hmm. outside of it, so we've got all these interesting stacks. So, uh, what did you think about when you were imagining this on another world? Like, what were the differences between what you saw and what you imagined with this, with no atmosphere, maybe a different gravity, uh, all the different variables that would be different uh, somewhere else in our solar system? Yeah, that's one of the things we, we have fun with and we scratch our heads over. Uh, so at times, Michael Carroll has um, uh, you know, done other paintings of um, you know, let's say, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, the volcanic activity on Enceladus or, or Io or whatever. And uh, you, know, you send it to me, I'll send it to some colleagues, and we we'll kind of argue about, well, these jets are not quite at the right angle, you know. It's so, uh, yeah, you have to take into account all that. Uh, I mean, there's other worlds, you know, except for places like Venus and Titan, uh, they have practically no atmosphere. Uh, so, uh, you know, the volcanoes were erupt in a vacuum. Um, so, for example, volcanic plumes on Jupiter's moon Io that I studied a lot, I mean, they'll, they'll go supersonic and they'll go, um, you know, much higher uh, in in the atmosphere than uh, the plumes on Earth. Because there's no gravity. In, in, well, no, no. It's, there is gravity. It's much less. But the major effect is actually the lack of an atmosphere because mm. they just, you know, the, the, the speed uh, can be so great. So I think we have time for one more question. I've been uh, told that uh, Erebus was a uh, major contributor to the ozone hole in that the gases are spewed chlorine and some... Uh, sulfur may have uh, uh, reduced the uh, the ozone. Is there interest in that? Um, uh, you, you're, sorry, the first part of your question I missed that. Uh, the Erebus was a major contributor. Oh, to the Erebus. Ozone hole mm. on the planet. Um, uh, it, it had some effect. You know, I uh, uh, the ozone hole, in fact, has gotten uh, smaller uh, since there were some environmental, you know, controls. Uh, but um, but Erebus, yeah, uh, does put out a lot of gases. Actually, the volcanoes in Vanuatu too. Uh, it's a lot of uh, volcanic gases um, uh, that uh, uh, those volcanoes in Vanuatu put out. Uh, and um, uh, it's um, you know people sometimes you know ask me, well, you know, what about? CO2 from volcanoes is that's what's causing global warming. It's like, no, but CO2 the volcanoes put out is it, it's very small compared to you know what the industrial world. Uh, I think it's my know. truck to get nine miles to the gallon that's uh, probably doing probably, more damage. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> it's, uh, so in, in, in concluding, by the way, wonderful talk. Thank you so much. What, what, what's next for you? What's, what's the next big mission for you? Uh, well, um, uh, in, in terms of work, work, you know, uh, at JPL at the moment. Well, you're a volcano I, nerd. In, yeah, in, you, know, you know, volcanoes. Well, I am um, uh, actually helping to study a concept for a new mission to Io, which is the volcanic moon. Uh, I don't know uh, if it's, you know, going to go anywhere or not. Uh, you know, we, uh, first of all, we have to convince JPL that it's worth, you know, putting a lot of work to write a proposal to NASA about it, you know, and then um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, NASA gets a number of proposals and they, you know, choose one. So, um, uh, so that might not happen. In terms of traveling to volcanoes, what's next? Uh, you know, as I said, I would love to go to Niragongo, but I'm waiting until things kind of calm down, and I've been waiting for years, in fact, with my friend Janie, we both really want to go, and it's like, oh, it looks like, you know, the Civil War is, has died down, oh, you know, there is Ebola now, or there is COVID, or there, 
you know, so we're, we're waiting for that lull. <laughs> well, thank you for taking time uh, to come to uh, speak with us today. And I would like to thank our uh, studio audience and, and our home audience for coming. And for those of you at home, I hope that you will come to the Adventures Club and experience the grandeur of our collection. Uh, you are always welcome. So get out of the TV, get into your car, and come down to the Adventures Club. And uh, Rosalie Lopez, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.